Hit me on Instagram. Have you ever had 17 girlfriends, two fiancés, one wife, and four kids? Yeah, me neither, but Jason freaking Collier did. So let's get into this case. So Jason Collier, who was the chief of police in a small town in Texas, ended up matching with a girl on a dating site. Her name was Cecily, and they hit it off really well. She was a mom, she was divorced, and he presented himself as a really good godly man that was going to take over. He offered to take care of everything, pay for everything, and then eventually proposed over the phone a couple months later. She accepted, and from then on out, he was referring to her as Mrs. Collier. Cecily got a little bit suspicious that he might be using her, so she went to go do some investigation herself and on the police website it listed him as being married and having kids so she was like okay something doesn't add up she confronted him and essentially was like hey what's this about he was like oh my god no i'm divorced like we're getting married baby i love you and he even gave her the annulment papers as proof but they were all forged here's a story time of how i caught my ex with another girl at a bar and no this is not my celebrity ex so this guy and I had been together for quite a few years and we had a lot of trust in the relationship, but I was visiting my family in Florida. He was in New York where we lived and he tells me that he's going to go have dinner with this mutual friend of ours who is a girl. He's hung out with her before I know her and she studied at the same school that we studied in. So I didn't think anything of it and I just said, fine. He said they were going to have dinner. So about eight hours passed and I realized I hadn't heard from him in those eight hours. So I text him and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Are you home? So he says, yes, I'm actually home now. And I tell him, so what were you guys doing for eight hours? And he says, we had dinner. We were talking a lot and blah, 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 blah. And I just want to say I wasn't jealous at all in the relationship. We had a lot of trust, so we never checked each other's locations. But this time, my instinct told me different. So, of course, I went and I checked his location. He must have forgotten that we had um, our locations turned on. So guess what? Part two of how I caught my ex with another girl at a bar. So it's about midnight, and he just told me that he was home. But my instinct told me differently, and I always, always trust my instinct. So I went and I checked his location and it turned out that he was somewhere in Brooklyn and we lived in Manhattan on the Upper East Side. So I take a screenshot and I send it to him and guess what he does? He doesn't reply to my messages and proceeds to turn off his cell phone for the next 30 minutes. During those 30 minutes, he kept turning on his phone so I would see his updated location. So I would take a screenshot every time he moved and I could tell that he was in a moving car, obviously trying to haul ass back to the apartment where he said he was. So as he kept turning it on and off, I kept taking screenshots every time he would turn it on. I was literally staring at my phone for those 30 minutes on the toilet. I was collecting all the proof so that he had no way of telling me that I was making things up or that I was wrong. So finally, he turns his phone back on and he's two blocks away from the apartment. Part three of how I caught my ex with another girl at a bar. So I can see from his location that he is now two blocks away from the apartment. So he calls me and pretends like nothing happened. And I said to him, Hey, look, here are all the screenshots, take a look and explain yourself. He knows he got caught at this point, so he started crying, hyperventilating, almost having a panic attack. And he always did this whenever I got upset at him. I decided to grill him anyway. He begins to explain that he was having dinner with her and they then decided to go to a bar because they were having such a great time and that he didn't want to tell me that he was at a bar because he thought that I would get suspicious. And I said, well, why would you do that instead of just telling me the truth when that would not have upset me? What upsets me is that I caught you lying to me and that you're at a bar in Brooklyn with some other girl. I definitely lost my trust and I told him to send me a statement of the bar, a bank statement, anything that proved that he was at this bar at that time, which he didn't. Of course, um, yeah, we're no longer together. Yeah. Ended up dating a guy in order to cover up for dating another guy. So I was kind of sort of low-key cheating at the time. But I can explain. So to provide a little bit of backstory, I was living with my biological father at the time. Not exactly what I wanted to do, but this was because of some circumstances that were going on. So due to this, I had to move to a new school and start my senior year at a different place. A few days had started and I didn't really like it very much, so they ended up changing my classes around. And I got stuck in this new art class. So I walked in and immediately this cute guy walked in. He introduced himself, I'll call him Brad, and he said, hey, and we ended up talking the entire class period so not only was he cute but he had an amazing personality as well so obviously i had to give him my number there's no other option that night he texted me how pretty i was and how he was dying to get to know me but the text got a little bit explicit and my father ended up going through our text messages and immediately did not like this man right off the bat so when we started dating i didn't get his approval either and my dad made us break up i still liked this man and was completely heartbroken when i went to school the next day i was told by another guy that he liked me so i ended up coming up with a little plan stay tuned for part two and follow me on insta story time part two about how i was dating a guy in order to cover up for dating another guy so after my dad forced me to break up with the guy that i was currently dating because he didn't like him and i realized that this other guy at school 
people did like me. I figured that I would talk to Brad and tell him this little plan that I had. This new guy that liked me was very cute, but not my type at all. But he did have a better standing with my father. So I decided to start dating the guy that my dad liked, but also dating Brad on the low key. Every single art class, I would spend time with Brad and I would text him all day and we would FaceTime at night, but then I would go on dates with the other guy. That way it would be like a cover for my dad so he really wouldn't go through my phone. Well, yes, I was two-timing and this was extremely exhausting. I really felt like I screwed up when I started to develop feelings with the new guy. I tried to literally list off reasons on why I didn't like this guy, but honestly, he was just too caring and too sweet for me not to. So I ended up breaking up with him because I felt like this was going too far and I got back with Brad and just did it behind my dad's back. But Brad then left me for his ex, so I ended up sneaking over to the other guy's house and that's how I lost my virginity. Now I'm happily married to a totally different guy three years after this whole situation. If you guys have a story you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. So one time I decided to get revenge on my boyfriend by hooking up with his brother and glitter bombing his car. So back in March of 2020, I was working at this little travel stop. It's where a lot of the truck drivers would come in and I ended up meeting this really charming guy. He would stop by there often and he was really sweet and funny and we had a really good connection. So we decided to start dating. But immediately after, it got very toxic. While we were clearly in a relationship, he never wanted to put a label on things. And we would get into extremely violent fights where he would threaten to slap me or beat me. I would usually retaliate by calling him out for being a really bad father. But also, when we were doing the nasty, he would say really weird things. Like, I'm going to breed you or trap me. I'm thinking, boy. That's a really scary thing to say in bed. Ignoring all these red flags and continuing to date him, I figured out why he didn't want to put a label on things. It was obviously because he was cheating. I was upset and I told his brother about what was going on, and his brother came up with an idea for us to hook up together. And this continued to happen for a while until I felt like it wasn't good enough, and I decided that his car was going to be next. Like for part two and follow me on Insta. Story time about how I found out I had a stalker. This gets really scary, so let's start. I was living by myself in 2016 in Los Angeles. I was working a lot in commercials and modeling and doing a bunch of stuff. And I had my own little studio apartment on Melrose Avenue. It was super cute and I loved it. I felt very safe. Two months into the lease, I booked some acting work. So I had to be on set for three days in a row and I stayed in a hotel while I was on set. So I actually didn't get to go home. When I finally got home, I noticed that my fridge had moved about two feet to the right, which is very noticeable because that's a large space to cover. And I noticed that my fridge was just in a different place. So I called the landlord and asked her if they had to come into my apartment for some reason. And she said no. I didn't want to freak out. So I just tried to ignore it. And I thought no one's coming into my apartment. That would be insane. For the next couple of days, I kept trying to justify how my fridge would move. I even thought that my apartment was probably um, being haunted by a ghost. Until one day after an audition, I come home and I find that my Part 2 stalker story time. So I come home and I notice that my fridge has moved again. And I know this because I put it back and it was moved another two tiles, which is about two feet. So I quickly call the landlord and I say to her, can you please check any cameras if you guys have any? And lo and behold, she said, yes, we do have security cameras. Let's check right now. Come over to my place. So I run over to her apartment. She starts pulling up footage from that same day, but it's taking very long. And I ask her to actually check footage from the past few weeks so that I can see if anyone had been in my apartment the first time. So she pulls up the camera pointing to my hallway, but unfortunately the quality was so blurry and my door was just outside of the scope of the lens. Either way, I could still get kind of a glimpse. So she fast forwards through a few hours and finally I see a shadow. I tell her to stop and rewind and slow it down. And what I see literally made me poo my pants. Someone in a green shirt was right outside of my door and you could barely see their shoulder. Part three stalker story time. At the corner of the screen, I see there's a green shirt and it's like the shoulder of someone and it seems like they just disappeared into the door. Of course, I instantly started to freak out. Can you guys imagine seeing that? I was hyperventilating. I started to cry and she was trying to calm me down. Just to be safe, she called the owner of the building and asked if they had sent a repairman. They said no. Of course, I called the police. They said if there was no immediate physical danger, they couldn't come. So they didn't. Of course, I installed cameras. I had an app so that I could check everything remotely whenever I was out of my apartment and I never saw anything. After that, I would put the coffee table and a dresser in front of the door so that I could make sure nobody would come in while I was sleeping. I was very paranoid the whole time. I would cry every single day. To this day, I still don't know who it was. I don't know if they took anything. I don't know if they put anything in. I think after that time, they did not come back in, but obviously I did move out a month later. It was very scary. I started taking kickboxing and I still take it to this day. I think self-defense is super important, especially if you live by yourself. Part two of how I plotted revenge on my boyfriend by hooking up with his brother and glitter bombing his car. So by this time, I had been hooking up with his brother in our house for a So this is why you have to be careful of people videoing you doing the nasty. So house and we did a few things, but no big deal. About two months go by and we're still talking, but we're also saying I love you. But I ended up being messaged by a popular guy around this time who wanted me to come over to his house. 
I figured since me and the guy that I was talking to weren't officially together, and he said he would, but the video continued to go around. I started to worry once my best friend's cousin told my best friend's mom. That night, my best friend's mom went over to our house to tell my dad. My dad absolutely freaked out, and this is how everything went so downhill. My dad literally wanted to send me away to boarding school, and we ended up getting a call from the police about this issue. The guy ended up getting charged over this video. He was supposed to do community service, but ended up not doing it, so he was just fined. I really didn't want anything like this to happen, and we're now friends today. So I guess everything's okay. If you guys have a story you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. So I just finished this makeup routine, and I noticed that I'm breaking out down here. And I'm going to be taking photos for you guys for Instagram tomorrow, so this has got to go. I'm gonna start by taking off my makeup and then I will get right back to you guys. Now we're back with my designer bag. I'm gonna take out my skincare case. The first thing that I'm gonna put on is this Mary Jane glow mask. It matches my hair and it smells so good. And it's perfect if you get dry or dull skin over winter. It's gonna brighten you up, hydrate you, and clear your skin. And this mask doesn't even need to be washed off. It just absorbs into your skin. It also has cannabis sativa in it. I'll be back once this is absorbed. Okay, it's absorbed and how good does my skin look? We're gonna top it off with the Mary Jane Glow Serum. This also has CBD in it and it's just gonna help hydrate and nourish the skin. I couldn't even stress to you guys how good this smells. For the next part is I'm gonna be adding these heart-shaped acne patches. And I use these to just clear up my skin and heal it without over drying it. So Truly Beauty is launching a bundle right now to the 27th where you can get all the products that I just showed and it'll include a travel bag, spoon, and pouch. Go check. Hey guys, I'm getting ready for an audition and I just realized my nails look terrible, so let's fix them. I went to Walgreens and I picked up these Jelly Fantasy Nails. They look gorge in the package, so I'm gonna put them on my nails right now. Let's grab the first nail. I'm gonna put one drop of um, adhesive and press it on. Oh my God, that was so quick. Let's do the rest of the hand. Second nail, third nail, nail number four. This is the final product. Look how gorgeous they look. Absolutely stunning. It looks like I went to get a manicure, so I'm super happy with the results. For 10 bucks, this is so worth it. Here's a story time about when I got sexually harassed by a famous showrunner in Hollywood. I find it extremely important to share these story times because I want to avoid this from happening to anyone else. And of course, I just want to get the story out there so that people can become more educated and aware. I think it's atrocious what's happening in Hollywood, and I just want to do my part. Please, please like and share this. I want as many people as possible to see this, and I think it's finally time for me to speak up. It was 2016. I was living by myself in Los Angeles, and I was lucky enough to work as an actress. One day, I was walking down Melrose Avenue, and I heard a man's voice yell out, Hey, hey, right behind me, and I turn around, and right beside me is this strange man, and he says, Hey, are you an actress or a model? I replied saying, Yes, why? He said, I'd like to have a photo shoot with you. He pulled out his phone and googled his name because he really wanted me to see how important he was in Hollywood. He insisted about 10 times that I give him my phone number and because I just didn't have a good feeling about him, I gave him my email address instead. For the next couple of weeks, part two, for the next two weeks he would email me almost every single day asking me when I would want to shoot. The fact that he was chasing me so much really turned me off and I had no desire to shoot with him at all. I was honest with him though and I said, look, your behavior is kind of odd so I don't think I'm going to be able to shoot with you. He kept swearing up and down that he didn't have any bad intentions and he sent me his website so that I could take a look at his past work and I saw on his website that he had shot with many other models and actresses so I thought to contact one of them. I messaged one on Instagram but she did not get back to me. Finally I gave him my phone number just to see what kind of vibe I would get off of text. He messages me and starts begging to set up a photo shoot. Again this turned me off I didn't have a good feeling. I mentioned it to my best friend and she was like don't worry just set up the photo shoot and I'll go with you this might be a good opportunity since he's a showrunner and maybe the pictures will come out good. We set up the photo shoot and it had been about a month since we first met. That weekend my friend and I go to his house for the photo shoot thank god I did not go by myself. This is where it gets disturbing. Part three is up. Part three. We show up to his beautiful house with two Teslas in the driveway. He tells my friend to go to his office because she brought her laptop so she could do some work. We go to the backyard and we start taking some pictures. We started with headshots, nothing crazy. We shot for a total of one minute before he started asking me weird questions. Do you have a boyfriend? Are you married? Do you live by yourself? I answered these questions thinking it was weird, but I just said, it's okay, relax. Then he asked if I masturbated and if I fucked people. I told him to stop taking pictures and he said, why are you overreacting? What's the matter with you? I was just trying to get to know you. This is what I do with my models. Of course, he was trying to put it on me like I was the weird one. I went to my best friend and I said, we're leaving right now. And she said, what happened? Tell me now. I told her everything he had just asked me and she said, yeah, let's go. I asked him for the SD card, but he said it was his private property and I couldn't touch it. On the way back to my apartment, I felt violated. I was crying and hyperventilating. My best friend was there with me the whole time. I appreciate her so much. I call my manager and I tell him what happened and he said, well, we can't do anything against this guy. You don't want to get blacklisted. 
Hey guys, I'm so excited to show you guys this video. I finally got PDO threads. I've been really wanting to get it and I did a bunch of research and I found this place in Miami called MD Solutions. This is the doctor. She's just numbing the area where she's going to be putting the thread in. And PDO threads are basically the threads that are used in open heart surgery and how they suture up the heart. And they found back in the 80s or the 90s that it basically creates collagen around the area. So she's going to insert this huge um needle it wasn't painful though and it leaves behind the thread and you see the thread pulling and she just pulls it she snips it off and that's basically it this is going to replace filler and botox um i've never wanted to get filler but i did want to lift my cheeks so this is like kind of like the perfect solution and you only have to do it once to two times a year so that's pretty good for me this is me right after it was totally okay no pain or anything